Imagine, too, if your horse is insured and then you have to call up the horse insurance company and you're like, yo, my horse was abducted by aliens. Like, I don't know how you're going to deal with that payout, but we got to figure it out. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another long-awaited, mind you, unsolved and unkempt video. This is my all-time favorite horse mystery abduction story. I doubt that we're gonna solve it in this video, but we'll try our best. So buckle up because this is definitely gonna be a ride. However, before we get into all of this extraterrestrial madness, I have to say a massive thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Pet Emergency Fund by Pet Cube. I've been working with Pet Cube for so, so long, and Pet Cube recently came out with their pet emergency fund, which is amazing. Pet Cube's pet emergency fund allows you to protect your pet in just a few simple steps. You can get up to $3,000 in pet emergency and 24 seven vet support as we all know, emergencies happen, and so many people are unprepared for pet emergencies. We talk about this so much on my channel. One out of three household pets will experience an emergency within their lifetime. And 47% of pet owners have some sort of emergency-related debt regarding their vet bills. So this is exactly why you need financial safety and 24 seven support for your animals. And Pet Cube has you covered. This is something that I personally use and have been using and I absolutely love this. One of the biggest perks for me personally as somebody who owns a lot of animals is the fact that Pet Cube Pet Emergency Fund allows you to cover up to six animals with just one monthly subscription of $29 a month. Emergency Fund by Pet Cube allows for a no waiting period to get paid back, meaning that right after your pets receive their emergency treatment, they will cover up to $3,000 of that emergency vet bill. There's no discrimination. Pets of all breeds, ages, and medical histories are covered. So if you guys would like to sign up your animals for their own pet emergency fund by Pet Cube, you guys can click my link down below and also get 50% off. I know. And not just 50%, but 50% off your first two months, you guys. So seriously, everybody should just go check this out like right now, what are you doing? So thank you again to Emergency Fund by Pet Cube for sponsoring this video. Let's get to it. So now I think it's time for us to rewind and go back in time to September 7th of 1967. It was on September 7th of 1967, near the town of Alamosa in the San Luis Valley, Snippy, a three-year-old Appaloosa mare, had failed to return to the Harry King Ranch where she was stabled. Mysteriously, two days later, Snippy's remains were found a ways away from the ranch after reported UFO sightings in the area. In the 66 years following, the mysteries and conspiracy theories have not stopped. So you guys, today we are going to be cleaning my bitless bridle. This is my Nalanta bridle. I encourage everyone else, if you have tack that you need cleaned, definitely pause the video, go grab your tack. Let's start cleaning our tack while we unfold this potential UFO mystery. Imagine if your horse was abducted by aliens. You know what? If Link was abducted by aliens, every single one of you better believe me. For those of you who don't know, I am actually from Colorado. So this story hits close to home. I've actually heard about this my whole life and my childhood growing up 
Alamosa was just south of where I grew up, and this story was so huge in my area. Pretty much my whole life I grew up believing in aliens or extraterrestrials. Even, you know, being religious, I've always felt like there's got to be more to the universe than just us. Over the last few years since, you know, the Pentagon has been basically confirming UFOs and alien encounters, I kind of was like... Okay, yeah, they're probably real. The Harry King Ranch was a horse stable in which Snippy was located and boarded at. Mr. King was the ranch owner, and he was the one who discovered Snippy's remains. Two days prior, he had notified the family that Snippy had gone missing. They ended up finding Snippy's remains roughly a quarter mile away from their ranch house, with no tracks surrounding the body, no blood surrounding the body, and according to his own account, the horse's head and neck had been completely stripped of flesh, leaving nothing but bare, seemingly sun-bleached white bone exposed to the elements while the remainder of the mare remained unscathed. Imagine your horse goes missing. The last thing that I would think is happening to my horse is that he's in an alien <laughs> spaceship. <laughs> Wild. And you know what kind of sucks? It sucks when people immediately discount stories that are surrounding alien abductions because... Bitch, it's been 66 years and they haven't solved this, okay? I just kind of feel like if it wasn't aliens, they would be able to come up with, you know, I don't know, a cause of death? <laughs> Mr. King returned the following day accompanied by the horse's owners. <laughs> Imagine. I would have a mental breakdown. Imagine the, the owner of your horse barn calls you up. Hey, bitch, your horse is dead. By the way, I have no idea what happened, but your horse is basically decapitated. <laughs> I, would, I would honestly think I'm being pranked. Mr. King and the horse's owners were determined to unravel the mystery surrounding Snippy's untimely death, but more questions than answers arose. Again, there was no blood found on or around the body, and the flesh appeared to have been removed neatly with precision. A number of darkened patches said by the witnesses to look like scorch or exhaust marks were found in the vicinity of the carcass. Roughly a hundred yards away, they discovered a shrub, which was squashed nearly flat, and nearby a series of six small round indentations in the ground, arranged in a circle. Obviously, they're insinuating that some sort of spacecraft had landed, which... I believe. I just don't really see a reason why they would lie, okay? I know ranch people, and I feel like the last thing that they want to deal with is news media and people coming out believing that they were involved with an alien abduction or thinking that they're kooks or whack jobs. I just feel like that's the last thing that you want to deal with, you know what I mean? Also, not to mention, it's insane that they did not find any tracks or blood, and that the flesh was precisely cut, indicating that it had to have been a tool of some sort, and it wasn't animals. Animals would not be able to strip the flesh off of a horse's bones so cleanly with precision. So it definitely wasn't animals. And I also believe that if it was an animal attack, you would at least see blood or hoof prints or footprints around the body, just something. The, the fact that they didn't find anything around the horse's body at all, sus. Not to mention one other thing that's kind of a side note that I feel is important information. One other horse was also found mutilated, I believe the day after Snippy's body was found, about a quarter mile away. There were some other elements to the initial reports as well. At one point, the exposed bones allegedly appeared to be bright pink the following day. 
a sticky, sweet smell hung in the air around the body. According to the media and multiple news organizations, they reported that the horse owner had actually gone out to look at the horse's body. And when she had arrived, she actually picked up a piece of the horse's flesh nearby the horse's body that was, I think, a few feet away. And it was sticky and it ended up burning her skin. And so she dropped it. Imagine you pick up a piece of your horse's body, first of all. But second of all, imagine it literally burning your skin as if you had touched acid. One interesting fact at the time is that UFOs were sighted all across Southern Colorado in the Alamosa area. Residents of sparsely populated areas of Southern Colorado had reported numerous sightings of unidentified flying objects in the recent weeks leading up to the horse's death and disappearance. One man even said his car was followed by an object, and one student said that his tires mysteriously went flat as he approached a cigar-shaped vehicle. And the list goes on. There are so many sightings reported at this time, you can just see it on the news reports. I honestly really feel so bad for this horse's owners. I mean, imagine that your horse gets abducted by aliens and literally nobody believes you. Imagine too, if your horse is insured and then you have to call up the horse insurance company and you're like, yo, my horse was abducted by aliens. Like, I don't know how you're going to deal with that payout, but we got to figure it out. Snippy's death was just the tip of this fairly gruesome iceberg. As might be expected, anyone who raises livestock will occasionally find a dead animal among their herd, and sometimes those deaths are mysterious in nature. Moreover, over a decade after Snippy met her unfortunate demise, the author of the local newspaper was able to interview a significant number of ranchers who subscribed to the alien dissection hypothesis of the farm animals in their local area. What a wild time to be alive. I mean, so many alien sightings, ugh, I wish I could have been there. What do you do? You know, if you see a horse being abducted by aliens, what would you do? There were multiple veterinary autopsies performed on Snippy that didn't come up with any real conclusions or causes of death. However, there were multiple scientists that had tested the area and found it to be radioactive after Snippy's death. This leading to one Dr. Robert Shoemaker, who's a German biochemist, who speculated that Snippy's body could have been, quote, eaten by radioactive ants. End quote. <laughs> I think that's probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think that ants would be able to eat a horse's flesh in such a precise manner all the way down to the bone, not leaving any blood or anything really behind. I think that that's insane. The fact that the horse was completely stripped from the neck up of any flesh, that's impressive. I don't even know butchers that could do that. There could have been some Project Blue Book stuff going on here. I don't know, seems a little sus that, you know, they did find radiation there where the scorched marks were, but then they come back and say, well, we don't really know if those are scorched marks. Well, we don't really know why the radiation's there. Well, the, the horse could have been eaten by ants. <laughs> Excuse me? The aforementioned Air Force-funded team from CU Boulder even investigated the mystery surrounding Snippy's death. They concluded that the actual cause of death was a perfectly mundane infection. Local veterinarian Dr. Wallace Leary acquired the carcass from the owner in order to mount the skeleton outside of his practice as a novelty. In the process of preparing the bones, he discovered the source and cause of the infections, two small caliber bullet wounds in the right flank. First of all, two small bullet holes in the right flank would not have killed the horse. It wouldn't have created a life-threatening infection that killed the horse within two days. And that's just my opinion. Those two holes could have been caused by something else, though, because they never actually confirmed that it was from bullet wounds, even though they say that. 
they didn't find any bullets. Also, to say that a horse died of a small infection within a 48 hour time period, highly unlikely. And the owners plus the ranch owner said that the horse was perfectly fine before the horse went missing. Lies. I also think it's funny how they came to that conclusion conveniently after the government got involved and started investigating it with the Air Force. Speculation around the apparent cleanliness of the neck wound ranged from the frightened horse getting tangled in a barbed wire fence to someone discovering the suffering animal and cutting its throat in an act of mercy. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. A barbed wire fence is not going to completely remove all of an animal's flesh. It might deglove their skin, but it's not going to completely remove all their flesh. And I'm sorry, but if a veterinarian is inferring that, that a barbed wire fence could do this to a horse, you're dumb. If it was a barbed wire fence, or if it was animals or scavengers, there would be blood, there would be footprints. There were no footprints, no blood, nothing. It's almost as if the horse was levitated and experimented on and killed and then just dropped back off. And there's no evidence to support the fact that there were festering bullet wounds. And the veterinarians that examined the horse at the time didn't see anything of the sort. So it's kind of sus that 40 years later, they say that they find bullet wounds in the skeleton. Moreover, many speculate that it was entirely possible for the blood from the wounds to have dried, leaving behind discolorations that were misidentified as scorch marks. No, 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 no. Blood is not going to look like scorched marks. Are you kidding me? I feel like this is almost insulting that this is the official report because it kind of makes the owners of the horses and the ranch owners sound dumb. I really have a hard time believing that a rancher who has probably seen blood many times throughout his life didn't know the difference between dried blood and scorched marks. I have a pretty strong suspicion that he did and that he was definitely telling the truth because why would this guy lie? Nevertheless, the circumstances surrounding Snippy's death remain a mystery still to this day, open for debate in so many UFO circles. Snippy's remains passed from owner to owner for years until being put up for auction on eBay in 2006. When the owner couldn't get the full 50,000 price he was asking for, the post was withdrawn drawn where I actually would really like to buy this. Where would I put it? Probably right here. Maybe, maybe right here. I, it'd be way too big. I think my bridle's pretty clean. I cleaned it pretty thoroughly. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think this is one of the most fascinating horse disappearances and mysteries that still to this day remains unsolved. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. What do you think happened to Snippy? A massive thank you again to Emergency Fund by Pet Cube for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you guys can get two months for 50% off if you click my link down below. It's an absolute necessity, especially if your animals get abducted by aliens, girl. You got to be able to pay that bill if they make it back alive. Anyway, I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.